I'm Jacob James, photographer, filmmaker, and Panasonic Lumix ambassador. Lens choice is one of the most critical creative decisions we take as filmmakers. In this video, I want to do a quick rundown of the differences between autofocus lenses and manual Cine Primes on the S1H. I'll also dive into a few example situations of where, where you might want to use this one, over this one, or vice versa. Here I have two lenses, the Panasonic Lumix Pro 50mm and the Schneider Xenon FF 50mm Cine Prime. These lenses are both 50mm, so why would you choose one over the other? So let's start at the back of the lenses. The first thing you'll notice is the lens mount. The Lumix Pro comes with an L mount. This means it can connect to any of the S series cameras without an adapter, meaning you get full electronic control for both image stabilization, autofocus, and aperture control. On the other hand, on the Cine lens, has a PL mount, one of the most common mounts found on cinema lenses. In order to mount this lens onto the S1H, we'll need to use an adapter such as this one from C7. This allows you to adapt a PL mount to an L mount. After the lens mount, we also have iris control. And now as you can see, on the Cine lens, you get smooth movement between all the various T-stops without any set stops. The aperture ring is also geared to ensure you can control it with a motor for remote aperture control. On the Panasonic lens, we have an electronic stepped aperture ring. You'll also notice we have f-stops and not t-stops. So what is the difference? Well, f-stops are theoretical measurements most commonly found on stills lenses, whereas cine lenses tend to use t-stops, which are the actual measurement of light transmission through the lens. This means that a T2 lens like this will always be T2, no matter the brand. But an F2 lens might not always be the same as an F2 lens from another brand. On the Panasonic lens, the aperture control can either be done electronically by setting it to the A position, or it can be controlled manually using the stepped ring on the lens. Next down the lens, we have what's probably the most important part of the lens, the focus ring. The Panasonic lens is autofocus, giving you the ability to allow the camera to control the focus. The benefit for stills photography is clear, but also now more and more people are finding autofocus useful when shooting run and gun video work. For controlling the focus of owl mount lenses manually, there are assistant functions available such as a focus transition mode. This uses the autofocus system to smoothly move between two or three set points without needing manual control replicating hard to achieve focus pulls quickly and easily. To set this mode, simply go to the other submenu under the uh, video menu, down to focus transition. Here you can select two focus points, a focus transition speed, and then you simply click start. Then you click between the two focus points and the camera will do the rest, creating smooth focus pulls. The focus ring on the Panasonic lens also has a manual clutch, allowing manual focus with stops. You can also customize the focus throw of all the L mount lenses on the S1H, the S1, and the S1R, either linear or non-linear, and also adjust the focus rotation from 90 degrees to 360. On the Cine lens, the focus ring is very different. Here we have a geared, dampened ring with hard stops at each end. This is essential for ensuring repeatable focus when using a follow focus. Cine lenses always tend to have long focus throw for fine adjustment. As you can see, I can go nearly all the way around the barrel from near to far focus, giving you really nice fine control over exactly where you want the focus to be. To help with manual focus in the S1H, there's also nifty functions such as magnification, allowing enlargement up to 20 times, a focus peaking option, which can be changed in sensitivity and color, as well as the punch in to enlarge the decisive area to adjust focus on the spot. The other thing that cine lenses tend to have by design is consistent sizes and weights across different focal lengths. They also tend to have consistent front diameters for using matte boxes. This makes swapping lenses out on shoots, even if mounted with a matte box or on a gimbal, much quicker and easier. Stills lenses aren't designed with these same requirements in mind. 
so they're often made much smaller and lighter. Cinema lenses, by design, are also made to have much less focused breathing. Focused breathing is a change in the actual focal length of the lens while focusing. Many still lenses perform poorly when it comes to focused breathing, but the latest Almant lenses from Lumix have been designed to ensure minimal focused breathing, making them ideal for hybrid shooters shooting both stills and video. So when would I choose one over the other? AF style lenses are perfect for video work where you're solo shooting or needing to travel a long way over rough terrain or with a light kit. The AF can make accurate focus pulls much simpler and the lighter weight and smaller size makes using these lenses while traveling or on a smaller camera setup a huge benefit. Cinema lenses on the other hand are designed for all out use on set. Ergonomically they're much easier to work with when you have a first AC pulling focus or where you need to swap out a lens on a gimbal very quickly. They're also much simpler to use with matte boxes and follow focuses in general. As with all creative tools, neither one of these is necessarily better than the other. They're suited to different jobs, and as a creative, you should always select the right tool for the job at hand. But these are the lens options for the new Lumix S1H. Panasonic.